Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me as I explore the amazing, surprising, wide world of pens. And yes, I got a new pen today. Came in this nice metal box with some interesting printing on it. The first thing that comes to mind is, ah, these people are pretty much into engineering details. You got your engineering drawing showing what they're going to be doing. Yeah, that section is pretty interesting. And of course, the good blue is the name of the company. I bought this directly from them, and it was an easy process. And I'm glad I did because this model sold out relatively quickly. It came fairly quick in this shipping package. And they tout the fact that all of their packaging is recyclable, and I would agree with that. So this is your standard metal tin box that has a pop-off lid. And we see the pen held in with this recyclable felt liner instead of some type of plastic or things of that nature. And you pick up the pen, the first thing you'll notice is it's a decent weight, not overly heavy and not overly light. It has a nice flat spot on it. The knurling on this brass piece is very interesting. I mean, aesthetically, I find it very pleasing. You know, it has some similarities to a number of other turned metal pens. That minimalistic design where there's no step up between cap and barrel. So I think we need to look at this a little bit more closely, and we will. I always appreciate getting a nice handwritten note thanking me for my purchase. Very nice ink. Incredibly nice script there. And hopefully I can do something similar with the pen I have. I'm certainly going to try to find a similar type of ink because I really like that blue. I'm going to inject an editorial comment early in the video. It's been a number of days since I finished the video review and I've spent more time writing with this pen and I began to learn its attributes and the way that it works and it is a very good pen. It's a pen that you need to learn how to use and I think I am now comfortable with that. It's been used in a writing of a number of letters. So one of the things is this writes first time every time and it's a very consistent writer. It feels good on paper and you can get a little bit of flex out of it to add some character to your writing but it's not something that I can do on a regular basis. You know, that's the easy way to do it. And yes, you can starve the feed and it will railroad, but it does recover relatively quickly. So the polymer feed, I don't think really does as good a job as, as it should or just a nice ebonite feed with a big channel in would do, but it is certainly an interesting and unique feature. So overall, I've enjoyed writing with this pen so I just wanted to interject that now and give you some examples of the writing. Now back to the regular review. So the first thing you'll do is unscrew the cap. And I've learned that holding the section, the cap comes off in less than one turn. They've really done an excellent job in threading. There's a pen engineer that would be very happy with the way they've done their threading. You know, that's your... Somewhat standard flex and nib. We'll see what they may have done to make it a little bit different. And we have that interesting white polymer feed, which is what they promote. You know, if you look at the website, that's right on the front page. And if you read about the history of the founders, you'll see that they also have focused on that. And I just find this to be a lot of interesting details that I find to be much different than any other pen I own. Originally when I saw pictures I thought that section was too small but it's 
Certainly not large, but it is definitely usable. Not slippery at all. And even though that's a fairly big step up, I don't feel it. So I could hold this pretty much anywhere I want. It does fit very nicely in the hand with that heavy section. The balance is really, really nice. And I wouldn't post it. It really doesn't post and say no more. So we're going to take a look at the guts of this pen. And then I'm going to see what nice blue ink. So to me, this flat spot could have lined up with the nib or lined up underneath of the nib. But there's a lot of moving parts. You got the section threaded in to the barrel and that threads in nice as you can see. But then that nib collar, and let me play around with it because I did remove it. I'll be back. Well, I'm back and as I thought, this nib assembly is a lot of fine threads that are done to put it into the section and it's multi-threaded so I found a spot where that winds up fairly well not exactly perfect but I'm comfortable with it just goes to show you taking a pen apart right when you get it sometimes you can't put it back together exactly as you received it and I should have taken some pictures of it but of course I had to take it apart so as I explore this pen I feel like channeling Doodlebud because he certainly focuses on engineering to a much different approach than I do. I tend to think about why a pen is what it is and does it do what it's supposed to do. So speaking of that, you can see how that facet lines up very well. But I had to make a design change in order for that to happen. It comes off with a few turns, but I put a silicone O-ring there, one of the ones that PenBBS uses at the top of their section, and that just really makes this closure work very, very well because you start engaging that O-ring, and you come around and it stops right there, and it's very secure and very consistent. It may have lined up when I first got the pen, but after a few turns, unturns and you know, removing the barrel and putting the barrel back on, it kind of got out of alignment, but that O-ring certainly has made it work. And the other thing it does is, is that it makes this a little bit more difficult to start the unturning, so when you uncap it from just you turning the barrel, it always uncaps from the cap threads and doesn't unscrew the barrel from the section, which is a problem I had when I first got the pen. So that's my doodlebud channeling thing where I made an engineering change to the pen and hopefully the good blue pen company might consider that. We'll see. These are the O-rings that I used. They're pretty standard, fairly thick. I didn't think a thicker O-ring would work as well as it did, but it worked very well. Well, we have to take a look at the bits and pieces that make up this interesting writing instrument. They tout their machining and that is a nice finish. You know, very coarse threads there that work on the section. And on the cap, yeah, it's a very consistent finish. And we see just a small amount of larger open threads that work to secure the cap. Where things get more interesting is with this section here. I've not seen anything designed like this. It certainly is functional. We have this pattern and another flat spot and everything lines up very nicely. I think the engraving or the name of the company, the Good Blue, is at the bottom of this section. And as you see in there is a machined ledge which matches up very nicely with this section that has a little step there at the bottom. 
So there's no O-rings there, but I would expect that that seals that nib collar very well to the section and eliminates any ink getting between the nib collar and the section, which can create problems as it might leak out while you're writing and then you get ink on your fingers and you may say why and that's why. But the real interest of the pen is this polymer feed. It's a standard, I would call standard flex nib. You know, uh, noodlers, a lot of Indian pens use this design, Fountain Pen Revolution. And it's interestingly soft. You know, certainly flex is pushing that description, but they put it on the nib. You know, just a scroll work, which is very common in a lot of nibs, Yovo. And that slit goes all the way up. No breather hole, but then with a slit like that, you probably don't need one. You know, the I'm not going to pull the nib and feed because I want to write with this as received. And we only need to spend a brief few seconds on this standard screw converter. Nice metal end, nice insert, but the real key is the nib and feed, which we need to look at at writing. The Good Blue R65 really is difficult to compare to other pens, but I'm doing the best I can here. Here's a Lamy All Star, Pilot Metropolitan, and a Pelican M800. The R615 is definitely the longest by a fairly large amount. And from the actual girth of the pen, it's fairly girthy. But as we know, that section is not. Let's look at them uncapped. So uncapped, they also <laughs> don't have a lot in common, these four pens. Now the M800 nib is certainly the winner in this group. Pilot Metropolitan nib, eh. Let me all start, eh. So this is that flex nib. As you can see, it's probably, you know, a good size nib. And you have this almost straight section, the triangular section. The section has a nice curve to it, but is on the small side. And this is a short section, but fairly girthy. And lengthwise, now they become a little bit more similar in length. Looking a little bit more closely at this section and nib end, again, four completely different ways of presenting a nib for writing in your hand, putting ink on paper. Ugh. So what ink to put in to the blue pen but a blue ink? Yes, the bottle says it's a blue ink. And it's an interesting bottle. Kind of reminds me of the Sailor bottles. I'm not a fan of these wide bottles that aren't very deep because they're pain in the butt to fill from. But it is a blue ink. And it should have very decent flow properties and everything else. So let's see how that flexible nib handles this ink. This was the most difficult pen I've ever had to review. And it's all my fault because I was not going to buy any more pens for the rest of the year. And then I saw this one and I said, I got to have it. And I had high expectations for it. And I think the best term I can use is unrealistic expectations. I mean, it is unique, it is fun. And it is very, very different. I mean, look at that blue feed, which was white when I first got the pen. So obviously the feed absorbs ink, takes on the color characteristics of the ink. Not exactly certain the purpose of it. Is it like a sponge? Maybe to provide a lot of ink reserve for that nib when you flex it. Changing ink colors is certainly going to be an interesting challenge, one which I'm not going to do in this video. Is that feed a 3D printed feed? Could be because the 
3D printing uh, stuff that I have uh, is fairly porous. So that section is about as small as I like. Here's the dimensions. We'll also give you the dimensions of the pen. It was also on the website, so we'll show you how they describe the pen. Nothing feels like this in my hand, any other pen that I, that I own. I've written with it for a couple days now, and when I first inked it up, it didn't write consistently at all. And I think it took about half of the converter was absorbed by that feed. So I refilled it, let it set overnight, and then it started writing more consistently. But I think enough talk. Let's see this nib in action. Does it flex? Yes. Does it require a lot of pressure to flex? Yes. I mean, it's definitely a nib that has a lot of potential in the right experienced hand, which I've come to know is not my hand. So it has some decent feedback. I haven't done any tuning, smoothing, or anything. Not certain what that would do. But it's just, as I mentioned, the most difficult pen I've had to review. I think I would need to spend a number of weeks with this pen, writing with it daily, and writing a few pages daily. I'm certain it will be in a number of letters. To get a feel for this interesting pen. And this nib just took a lot of writing to even just kind of settle in. And maybe it was my hand learning how to use it. So it's one of the discussions about flex. If you're going to try to flex a nib, it needs an experienced hand. And not my forte. As much as I enjoy writing and I enjoy my vintage flex... I don't know what to do. So to rate this pen, I'm going to give it a big question mark because nothing, rating is a relative rating and it's my personal rating. So I think this pen definitely has some extremely interesting characteristics. I love the combination of materials, a lot of attention to detail, like the threading, how the cap comes off in just a, less than a turn. Of course, I added that O-ring, so this lines up nicely. But, you know, again, it feels good in the hand, but it just is so different, and that requires a lot of time on my part, which I will give it because I think it deserves it. So thank you all for watching. I think you can see how this nib does give character to your writing. And the way that it works, it would take a lot of effort to spring it, which I'm certain was part of the design attributes when they engineered that nib. But it requires, again, an experienced hand. So hopefully you have an experienced hand and you enjoy your pens and putting ink on paper. Hope this video finds you safe healthy and happy. We've reached the end. We're going to say bye. Enjoy your pens and have a great holiday.